Space travel has been an aspirational feat for generations, but in our attempt to get out of the planet, science tells us that we are on our way to locking ourselves on Earth. In 1978, a NASA scientist named Donald Kessler put forward a theory that foretold a likely scenario in which space junk continually collides in orbit, creating an unstoppable cascade of crashes that will in turn generate more fragments of debris, resulting in a dangerous, never-ending cycle. Scientists have repeatedly confirmed Kessler's theory and warned that it is truthfully closer than we'd expected. As early as November of 2021, astronauts in the International Space Station passed a cloud of debris in a routine procedure, forcing them to take shelter and pray for their survival. Presages. Back in 1978, NASA scientist Donald Kessler studied the increasing number of satellites and spacecraft orbiting the Earth. More importantly, he began to wonder what would happen if collisions between them happened more often. Kessler then wrote a paper in the Journal of Geophysical Research on June 1, 1978, along with his colleague Burton G. Corpelet. Their theory pointed out that as satellites in orbit increased in numbers, the probability of crashes would also rise, and prophesied that our planet would eventually be cramped with orbital debris. The theory is now known as the Kessler Syndrome, and it depicts a gruesome future in which a cascade of collisions could trigger an unstoppable domino effect, potentially burying our dreams of space travel and becoming a dangerous scenario for satellites with distinctive functions. Given the density of objects present in low Earth orbit, it is likely that we are closer to this dystopian scenario than we care to admit. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first satellite in history, the Sputnik 1. Three decades later, there were 464 active satellites in orbit. But as late as 2020, that amount rose to 3,368. Notably, the number of inactive satellites is roughly the same. As of today, several private space companies have their own agendas. For example, SpaceX alone has projected to launch about 65,000 Starlings in the next few years. And other companies, such as OneWeb, plan to have their own too, not to mention entire countries like China. In-orbit collisions are not recurrent, but when they happen, they generate significant debris and residues, increasing the possibilities for more accidents. In 2006, an active and an inactive satellite crashed at 26,000 miles per hour, releasing over 2,000 fragments in a random splash. Those pieces are now closely monitored by the Department of Defense's Global Space Surveillance Network, or SSN. SSN tracks objects in low Earth orbit as small as two inches, and in the case of the geosynchronous orbit, objects tracked are about one yard in size. Fragments as small as four inches on a collision course with the spacecraft demand avoidance maneuvers. Unfortunately, current monitors don't always identify these threats on time, and emergency procedures are put into motion. By 2019, the European Space Agency calculated that there were 5,400 objects larger than one yard in orbit, and 34,000 fragments greater than four inches, including 2,000 active satellites. In addition, they calculated 900,000 pieces larger than 0.6 inches and 130 million above 0.4 inches. The pieces include both functioning and non-functioning satellites, as well as rocket bodies and leftovers from past missions. Consequences Deorbiting obsolete satellites would undoubtedly free up space. However, the process comes with its own set of risks. Satellites burn up when in the atmosphere, releasing pollutants that include metals. Every day, space rocks composed of different types of metals impact our atmosphere, including elements like iron, nickel, and aluminum. Still, it is expected that sometime soon, deorbited decrepit satellites will release up to 14 tons of aluminum on a daily basis. And the effects of this catastrophe are beyond imaginable. According to Dr. Ethan Siegel of The Big Think, artificial satellites will contribute about 30 times the naturally occurring amount of aluminum. Moreover, the effects of the disproportionate phenomenon will include seeding of clouds, tweaks in the reflective and heat-trapping properties of the planet, destruction of ozone molecules in the stratosphere, and of course, the disruption of circulation at several altitudes in the atmosphere. In addition, a crowd of numerous pieces of space junk will also affect the night sky view. Several scientists and experts have continually raised their voices to draw attention to the matter. One of them is Samantha Lawler from the University of Regina, Canada, who predicted that within a few years, one in every 16 stars we can make out at night could be a satellite. 
Another voice is Carolyn Porco, leader of the Cassini Imaging Science team, who expressed her thoughts via social media. Quote, The night sky belongs to all of us. It's important for its significance to our sense of place and meaning, and it needs to be preserved. Still, the projectiles in orbit have a potential to cause real damage beyond visual pollution. And unfortunately, some consequences can already be attested to. In mid-November of 2021, the International Space Station passed too close to a significant amount of debris, with seven astronauts having to take shelter and pray for their lives. Global Crisis Experts monitoring the situation said the International Space Station made close passes every 90 minutes, and Mission Control informed the crew that they would receive a detailed report of all the space junk that they would encounter from then on. The crew members would then be required to close hatches to modules around the space station during key moments. Although the U.S. government avoided open accusations about the origin of the hazardous debris field, it confirmed that Russia had conducted an anti-satellite test shortly before. The debris cloud, said to have been the result of the Russian test, currently poses a threat to the space station and other spacecraft. During a news conference, the U.S. State Department spokesperson explained, quote, Today, the Russian Federation recklessly conducted a destructive satellite test of a direct descent anti-satellite missile against one of its own satellites. This test will significantly increase the risk to astronauts and cosmonauts on the International Space Station, as well as to other human spaceflight activities. The speaker also made it clear that over 1,500 pieces were large enough to be monitored, but there were also hundreds of thousands of smaller particles. Usually, station officials move the space station to dodge debris, and there's even a safety perimeter closely monitored around the station that extends to 15 miles around and half a mile above and below it. However, in case of an emergency, standard procedures require astronauts to board their vehicles in preparation to evacuate. William Harwood, a space journalist from CBS News, informed in a tweet, quote, Details are sketchy, but the seven-member crew of the ISS took refuge in their Soyuz MS-19 and Crew Dragon Endurance spacecraft earlier today as a precaution due to a predicted close pass to or through a debris cloud resulting from a satellite breakup. The crew members eventually returned to the station, although some modules remained closed. Meanwhile, the U.S. Space Command gathered enough information to help countries maneuver their satellites out of danger. Notably, a previous event foretold the dangerous incident. Five days earlier, the International Space Station was forced to maneuver and avoid a collision. It was Russia's space agency that saved the spacecraft by changing its orbit and dodging the remains of a weather satellite destroyed by China during a missile test over a decade ago. The U.S. State Department then declared, quote, Russia's dangerous and irresponsible behavior jeopardizes the long-term sustainability of outer space and clearly demonstrates that Russia's claims of opposing the weaponization of space are disingenuous and hypothetical. The United States will work with our allies and partners to respond to Russia's irresponsible act. What is clear is that the lower orbit is overcrowded with satellites, and the situation won't stop anytime soon, increasing the plausibility of an apocalyptic event, just like Kessler predicted. Thank you for watching our video. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more intriguing content.